After an absence of more than two years, we are finally back in Nelson Mandela Bay. And it is time for the 16th edition of Ironman South Africa. Welcome to the Ironman African Championship Nelson Mandela Bay. As registered athletes in the event, you must have downloaded the athlete guide already and be conversant with everything in the guide. Also make sure that you are fully aware of the course and all the rules. The purpose of the race briefing is to highlight key aspects of the event that we need to be sure you are fully aware of. We are racing under COVID-19 regulations. That means that masks are compulsory and must be worn at all times throughout all aspects of the event, be they indoors or outdoors. An Ironman mask will provi be provided to you directly after crossing the finish line. Please put this on immediately. Please observe the 1.5 meter social distancing. All athletes are required to go through an athlete specific screening and temperature check at registration and further temperature checks and screening will be done throughout the event weekend. The Ironman team have endeavored to do everything possible to make your racing experience a safe one by reducing non-essential touch points throughout the race experience. For everyone's safety, please adhere to the social distancing and also because of that, there is no Ironman village. The King's Beach car park, swim start, transition area and finish line will be access controlled areas with no spectators. On Saturday, it's the Isuzu Corporate Triathlon Challenge. Please note that the King's Beach area will be an athlete only zone. No spectators will be allowed. There's also no swimming for Ironman athletes from King's Beach until nine o'clock in the morning. Please be sure that you avoid Marine Drive between 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. because this will be where our Corporate Triathlon Challenge athletes will be racing. And the CTC athletes will be making use of the promenades and the pathway between Kings Beach and something good until 12 o'clock. So please be aware of this and always give right of way to our athletes racing the CTC. On Saturday between half past one and 5 p.m., it will be your bike check-in and your gear bag check-in. And this is happening at the Kings Beach car park. Participating athletes must please check in a bike and the gear bags. You must check it in between the time slots we're given, half past one till five o'clock. Only athletes are allowed into the transition area. You'll be required to scan the QR code and have a temperature check done as well. If you registered on Saturday, you will not need to do this. Check-in on Saturday at Transition will be via the bike in out gates. Please remember your masks are mandatory. No mask, no entry. Bike maintenance will be on site during bike check-in for minor alterations and adjustments. They'll be located at the entrance to Transition. When you arrive at bike check-in, please arrive with your helmet on and your chin strap fastened. Make sure that your bib number is visible. Make sure you have a roadworthy race ready bicycle and make sure that you also have your gear bags fully packed, your bike bag and your run bag fully packed with everything you need for the bike and for the run. Please be sure that you check your helmet before coming to bike check-in for any damage. Your helmets will be checked on site as well. If there is damage, you will need to procure a new helmet. You may not cover your bikes. You may, however, cover some of the electronics on your bike. Nothing may be left on your bike overnight. On race morning, you can put your nutrition, your spares, your computers, etc., on your bike. If you are able to get into your bike shoes while cycling, you may clip your shoes into your pedals on race day morning as well. It is your responsibility to know what equipment is allowed and not allowed. Your bib number is compulsory to be worn on the bike portion of the race as well as the run. So please ensure that your helmet and your bib number, preferably on a race belt, stay inside your bike bag overnight. The transition bags need to be placed on the ground next to your bike. I will be giving you elastic bands as well so that you can attach those bags to your bike. It is illegal for an athlete to touch another athlete's gear to interfere with their equipment in any shape or form. So please only touch and use your own gear. No one will be allowed into transition after 5 p.m. And on race day morning, you have full access to your bicycle and your bags between 4.50 a.m. and 5.50 a.m. 
little visual representation of the bike park of your transition zone, brand new transition area at uh, Kings Beach. The great thing about this is this is where you will be in 2022 for the all new Ironman 70.3 Nelson Mandela Bay that becomes part of the Ironman African Championship weekend. And that's why we're using this all new massive parking lot uh, next to the, the beautiful water parks. Uh, no time to play at the water park because you're here to swim, bike and run. But just showing you that the entrance to the bike park is from the Marine Drive roadside and you'll exit from the side closest to the beach. We will be providing race day shuttles on Sunday morning. Those shuttles will run from the Paxton Hotel, which is closest to the city side, to the Radisson Hotel, which is closest to the university side up and down Marine Drive. To be able to use the shuttles, you need to please be standing on Marine Drive. They don't physically come to your hotels. Masks are compulsory. If you don't wear a mask, you will not be allowed to enter the shuttle. We will be collecting athletes and deliver them to Kings Beach Car Park. Once you've crossed the finish line at Hobie Beach at the end of the Ironman African Championship, you'll then go to the Hobie Beach Car Park where the shuttles will be waiting for you to take you back to Kings Beach Car Park where you collect your bike and your gear bags. The shuttle buses will not operate post-event, i.e. in the afternoon or the evening, to take you back to your accommodation. Another visual representation on the far right of your screen that's closest to the city and the harbour. From the Paxton Hotel, they run along Marine Drive, past Kings Beach, past Hobie Beach, all the way to the Radisson Blue, which is on the far left-hand side of your screen. Race day morning, pre-race transition access is between 4.50 a.m. and transition will close at 10 to 6. Please enter at the transition bike out, bike in gate, which is closest to the road, and exit through the swim in run out, which is closest to the swim start area. We'll be doing temperature checks on site again and the screening. Remember, it's athletes only, no spectators allowed at all. Athletes, if you fail the temperature check, you'll be required to proceed to the medical tent for additional screening. All athletes will be required to wear a face mask and please remember the social distancing at all times. Athletes who are using personal needs bags, you have personal needs bike and personal needs run, please drop these off with the trucks before you enter the transition zone. There are demarcated pens in which you leave your personal needs bag. So please put the bike personal needs bag in the bike pen and the run personal needs bag in the run pen. We will have bike maintenance available for you just outside transition for minor assistance. Check your bike, check your gear, put your nutrition on, put your bottles on, put your bike computer on. Ironman will have pumps available for athletes to use. Do not bring your own. If you do bring your own pump, please leave it in the pump storage area. If you have spectacles or hearing aids or asthma inhalers or whatever the case may be that you require after the swim, please leave it on the table as you exit transition and you can collect that post swim. And just remember, it is illegal to tamper with another athlete's equipment. When you leave transition, follow the designated path between the Super Tubes building and the Kings Beach Life Saving Club as you make your way towards the beach. As you leave transition, you'll leave your white streetwear bags with all your warm, dry clothing. You'll leave that with the volunteers at the Ironman truck, and the Ironman truck will make sure it's available for you at the end of your Ironman African Championship, just beyond the finish line. The Kings Beach car park and swim start will be a restricted area due to COVID-19 regulations, and it will be athletes only. Your athlete wristband is your all-access ticket to anything race-related, and that will get you to the swim start area. Before leaving the transition, please ensure that your timing chip is on your left ankle and that you have the official event swim cap. Iron Man accepts no responsibility for any valuables left in your transition bags. There are additional toilets available just out of the transition area at the main ablution block as you make your way towards the beach. No chip, no time. No chip, no time, no results, no results no world championship slot, no awards. Once again, we ask you to fasten your timing chip to your left ankle, the opposite side of the drivetrain of your bicycle. And we also recommend you use a safety pin to secure it.
please place the timing chip underneath your wetsuit, not over it. Uh, new chips can be collected at the dropout clerk gazebo, and uh, we'll have spare chips available at the swim start area as well, should you have lost yours. It's your responsibility to ensure that you have a timing chip on for swim, bike, and run. And uh, if you lose your chip or request a new chip, it'll be 1,500 Rand invoice to your athlete number. If, for whatever reason, you withdraw from the race, you must advise Ironman. Athletes who withdraw must report to the dropout clerk. You can also report to the medical pods on the beach, outside transition. They'll be at the bike out, bike in entrance, and also at the finish line area. Athletes who withdraw from the race, you will be allowed to access your streetwear bags and your transition gear, and then you head out directly to the checkout area. You will be able to collect your bike and bags until 2300 hours, 11 p.m. Medical officials, water safety personnel, and Ironman staff reserve the right to withdraw you from the event should we feel that it's in the best interests of your health and safety. Please ensure that you wear your mask until the very, very last moment before you start the swim. We have special medical bins for you to discard those masks before you start the race. We do have toilets available for athletes just outside transition on the way to the swim start. You will not have the opportunity to do a water-based warm-up. Please do a thorough land-based warm-up. You need to elevate your heart rate and you need to be nicely warm before you start the 3,800 meter swim. All the Swim Smart guidelines are available, available on ironman.com forward slash swim smart. There is no self-seeding for the swim. The way it will work is on a first come first serve basis. We have a holding area with 10 rows with 1.5 meter gaps between the rows and make sure that you keep a 1.5 meter gap between yourself and the athlete in the front of you. We'll be starting 10 athletes every five seconds. Professional men, mass start for them at six o'clock. Make sure you're there to cheer for them. Professional women will start at 6.05 and five minutes later, the rolling swim start for the age group amateurs for the 16th edition for the Ironman African Championship. Whatever you do, do not wear your bib number during the swim, but it is compulsory on bike and run. A visual representation of Kings Beach and the swim start area. You will have walked from the bike park past the super tubes and the life saving hut onto the beach, turn right and into the swim start corrals where we'll line you up as you make your way forward for your 610 start on the beach, 10 athletes every five seconds. Your swim out is on the harbor side of the beach with a run up over the beach through the showers and the water troughs into the transition area. The Roka swim course is one loop, 3,800 meters anti-clockwise with all the buoys on your left shoulder. You have 2 hours and 20 minutes to complete the swim from the time that your timing chip goes over the start mat under the swim arch. If you miss the cutoff, you will be a DNF in the results and you will not be allowed to start the bike. Once you've exited the water and you've gone over the timing mat at the swim out arch, you may strip your wetsuit to waist level as you run your way towards transition. We do have showers and foot troughs at the end of the beach run to rinse off. The swim course is an ocean swim with some waves on the entry and exit. You need to have the ability, the conditioning and the fitness to complete an ocean swim. Looking at the temperatures, so wetsuit temperatures for age group athletes under 16 degrees Celsius is a wetsuit compulsory swim. Over 24.5 is a non-wetsuit swim. We will announce the swim temperature on race day morning. Between May and November, the water temperature is typically 19 to 21 degrees Celsius. A water temperature between 12 degrees Celsius and 13.9 will see the sh swim shortened. Under 12 degrees Celsius will mean that the swim is canceled for all. Keep the first red turning buoy to your right and the rest of the buoys to your left. The yellow buoys are sighting and guider buoys. So then you're done with the swim, you've been through the showers, you get to transition, you run to where your bicycle is parked and where your gear bags are. Once you're at the bike, you can start your changing process. Please strip out of all your wet gear and ensure that all your wet gear is placed in your bike bag. 
Ensure that your helmet is on and your, time, uh, your helmet strap is fastened before you touch your bike. You need to make sure that your timing chip is still in place. Please put your bib number on facing the back. There will be no sunscreen supplied. There are also no wetsuit strippers supplied. You need to make sure that if you require sunscreen that you have your own. If for whatever reason you've lost your timing chip during the swim, please go to the drop dropout clerk gazebo just outside transition at the bike out. All your wet gear into your bike bag, bib number on the back facing the rearwards, helmet on, chin strap fastened. Unrack your bike and push it to the mount line. As I mentioned earlier, if you are familiar with getting into your shoes while cycling, you can have your shoes clipped into your pedals. Otherwise, please put your shoes on at the bike and then walk with your bike to the, to the mount line before you start riding. Transition will close to all athletes 10 minutes after the last athlete has exited the swim. Your transition times are included in your overall race time. For athletes that are doing the bike run, it will be a rolling start into transition after the last swimmer has exited the water or after the two hours and 20 are completed. The holding area for bike run athletes will be outside transition at the swim in gate. Please line up with your mask on 1.5 meters apart. Cutoff times will change for athletes who only bike and run to exclude the total swim time allowed. You run off the beach into the transition zone, go to your bike, get changed at your bike, and then you will push your bike out of transition towards the mount line. The bike course is two laps and a total distance of 180.2 kilometers. As you leave transition, you will head left out onto Marine Drive towards Kunmarkus Corp through Sardinia Bay, Sea View to Beach View and you'll be cycling on the left-hand side of the road. Remember, keep left, pass right. The turnaround point is about four kilometers along Elizabeth Road. You'll do a classic triathlon-style U-turn and head your way back. On return, before descending into Schoonmarkers Corp, be cautious around the sharp bend at the base of the hill. And the second turnaround point to start your last lap is in front of the big red and white beacon red and white beacon at the intersection of Admiralty Way and Marine Drive before you U-turn to start your second lap. Plenty of aid stations out on the course to fuel you to the finish. Remember your bike course cutoff is 8 hours and 10 minutes. Aid stations every 20 to 25 kilometers. You may not litter. Littering is a DQ offense, but we have litter zones 100 meters before the bike aid station and 100 meters after. Due to the current COVID-19 regulations, all aid station volunteers will be screened and they'll be in the appropriate PPE. Products will be issued to the athletes. All those products will be sealed. And remember, there's no personal seconding allowed, not even at the personal needs station. This is a representation of everything that will be offered to you at the various aid stations out there. All liquids will be in bike specific bottles that will fit into your cages. Water is in the pump bottles, but it also fits into your cage. Gatorade ready to drink, Morton gels and uh, water. All of this is available out there. Uh, typically we have fluids, then energy products, then fluids again. We've also got biogen bars for you at some of the aid stations. So you just might want to screen grab this slide, but it's also in your athlete guide so that you know exactly what's on offer to you out on the course and where. There's also personal needs. You would have dropped off your personal needs on race day morning before you enter transition. Athletes requiring personal needs must remain on the far left hand side of the bike course when turning and take caution and look out for other athletes as well. On your first loop at kilometers 89 so essentially that's at the beacon of the intersection of marine drive and Admiralty way so as you start the second lap that's where you can access your personal needs please stop take what you need out of your personal needs bag leave the bag there to be discarded and uh, the volunteers due to COVID-19 will only guide you to your bags but will not assist you in collecting your bag yourself Take what you need, refill, and leave your leftovers 
on site and it will be discarded. Let's talk about penalties. We have two penalty tents out on the course. The one is the, at the Beachview aid station after the first turnaround. On the left, just before the second turnaround point on the corner of Marine Drive and Admiralty Way. If you receive a penalty, report to the first penalty tent that you get to. So essentially, as you're going along, when you get to that penalty tent, you report there and you tell the marshals on site what color card you received and you serve your penalty. Penalty rules remain as per the WTC Ironman race rules, except littering. Littering at this race is a disqualification. Your drafting is 12 meters from the front wheel of the athlete in front of you to your front wheel. You have 25 seconds to pull alongside the athlete you are passing. That athlete then drops back. You merge back to the left and off you go. Remember that once you start the pass, you must complete the pass. Also remember that once you're passed, you must drop back. Minor infringements like blocking or riding on the wrong side of the road in the lane, you know, preventing people from passing you, will see you get a one minute time penalty. That is a yellow card. A blue card is for drafting. That is five minutes. The red card is a DQ. Three blues is a DQ. Littering is a DQ. Crossing the center white line is a yellow card or a DQ. And that is on the discretion of the referee. And you may not use any form of electronic device like cell phones, MP3s or GoPros, only your bike computer and the watch on your wrist. The referees will only talk to you if they want to issue you with a penalty. Essentially, they'll blow a whistle, they'll call out your race number and they'll ask you your surname. They'll show you the card and they'll advise you the reason for the penalty. You then need to report to the next penalty tent. It's your responsibility to know what color card you were shown. It's your responsibility to go to the correct tent and serve that penalty. We do have plenty of bike maintenance for you. The mechanics are wearing bike maintenance jackets. They're outside of the transition zone pre-race between 450 and 550. They're on the course. We've got three static stations, Virginia, Victoria Drive and Sardinia Bay Road intersection opposite the aid station in Beachview and on Marine Drive at the intersection of Admiralty Way. There are also roving bike mechanics. Six maintenance motorbikes will loop throughout the bike course for the full duration of the bike leg. But you do need to be self-reliant, you do need to keep basic spares on you, and you do need to be able to do basic mechanical fixes yourself. At each bike aid station, there will be Road bike tubes, tie levers, and a pump. Please note that only the tubes and the compressed air bombs will be sponsored. Everything else will be invoiced to you. Athletes who require tubbies, please carry your own as these will not be supplied. Post event, your email address will be supplied to the bike maintenance team for invoicing. Please pay timelessly. No bike maintenance may be undertaken whilst you are serving a penalty. SAG support and gear. So we do have SAG transport vehicles out on the bike course. Uh, they'll be stationed at the Victoria Drive and Sardinia Bay intersection and then Elizabeth Road just after the Beachview aid station. If you need to withdraw, you can stop at these locations. Once the vehicle is full, the vehicle will then leave to bring you back to the race village. All bicycles will be off the course and taken by the support crew and transported to transition. Athletes that are picked up by the SAG or race support crew vehicles will be provided with a disposable mask. You must wear this in the vehicles. The vehicles will wait at these points until the last cyclist has passed before returning to transition. At transition, please ensure you complete the dropout procedure with the dropout clerks. Once you've completed the dropout process, it will be compulsory for you to head directly to the bike checkout area where a volunteer will assist you in getting your bike and your bags. Please also remember to collect your streetwear bag from the finish line. We have cutoffs. The bike cutoff is recorded at the timing mat once you've completed the bike as you enter transition. If you do not cross this mat within 10 hours and 30 minutes of starting your race, you will be cut off. If you do not make the bike cutoff, you will not be allowed to start the run. If you miss the cutoff, you'll be reflected as a DNF in the results. When cut off, your bike will be taken from you and racked inside transition while you go to the dropout clerk to reg register dropping out of the race. 
we do have additional time of day hard cutoffs to ensure we can reopen the roads to uh, the citizens and the residents along the way. So at the start of lap two on Marine Drive opposite Admiralty Way, you need to have been through there by 12.45 p.m. And the second cutoff will be at the Sea View turnaround. You need to have turned around at Sea View by quarter to three in the afternoon. So then you've done with a swim, you're done with a bike, you get to the dismount line, please get off your bike just before the dismount line and push your bike to your rack to your original position. Only once your bike is racked can you then unclip your helmet. Your helmet must go into your run bag. Ensure that you now turn your bib number to the front, place all your unneeded bike gear into the bag, tie a little knot in it and leave it in place at your bike. Ensure that your race number is visible on the front and off you go onto the marathon run course. Your bike to run transition time is included in your total time. So you'll come off Marine Drive, you'll turn down the little driveway area towards the transition zone at the dismount line, get off your bike, run into transition, rack your bike in your original position where your gear bags are, get into your run gear, leave all your bike gear in your run bag and you'll have to follow the designated route out of transition between the cones and the perimeter fence as you make your way out onto the marathon run course. It is four and a half laps. It's a total distance of 42.2 kilometers. The first turnaround point will be a Drift Sands Drive where you'll make a U-turn and run back past transition, continuing along Marine Drive, past Hobie Beach and the finish line, on your way to Admiralty Way to the University Way Junction. There you'll turn and continue back the same route. Plenty of aid stations out on the run course as well. Just reminding you about your total race cutoff time of 16 hours and 45 minutes from the time you go over the start mat to start the swim until you cross the finishing mat under the finish arch on Hobie Beach. You may not receive treatment from the medical main medical tent as you run or walk past. That's only for post-race. We have aid stations every two to three kilometers. And again, remember, you may not litter outside of the aid station zones. 50 meters before and 50 meters after is your litter zone. The aid stations are self-service. Please only touch what you plan to take. All liquids in cups, water will be in sachets. Uh, no personal seconding allowed. This will see disqualified. No electronic devices like mobile phones, MP3 players or GoPros. There are no penalty tents on the run course. Uh, the penalties are dished out on the spot as a stop and go and your race number will be marked. Remember, no non-athletes are allowed on the finish line or down the finish chute. If you bring a family member, a friend or a pet down the finish line with you, you will be disqualified. So we spoke about those aid stations, which are every two to three kilometers, plenty on offer for you, everything you could possibly need to get you fueled to the finish line, as well as Red Bull. We have a specific Red Bull aid station at 10th Avenue. All this information is available in the athlete guide. There is personal needs on the run course. The access to the bags is only when moving in the direction away from transition heading towards the university. Volunteers will only guide you to your bags, but will not help you get your bag or remove the contents. Take what you need for your, from your bag and leave the rest there. Personal needs station is not an aid station. Therefore, there is no litter zone. Litter must be placed back in your bag before dropping it in the demarcated bag drop area. All bags, including those not accessed by athletes, will be discarded after the race. Should you wish to lodge an appeal against another athlete or a referee's decision, this must occur within 15 minutes after you cross the finish line. However, no person may file a protest which requires a judgment. Please advise one of the Ironman staff members on site soonest and the head referee will be brought to you for you to lodge the appeal. The head race referee located at the dropout control gazebo outside transition and then when the bike course closes at the dropout tent at the Ironman village. The payment for the appeals or protests will be 500 Rand cash to the head race referee. If you are successful, you will be reimbursed. 
run course some do's and don'ts and some dqs besides the overall run cutoff time there'll be a time of day cutoff on the last lap of the run course remember we're still racing under south africa's COVID 19 protocols so we have a curfew at midnight which means we have to end the event by 2300 hours to give everybody ample time to get home the cutoff on the run course will be at king's beach on marine drive when heading in the direction of admiralty way at 5 to 10 pm athletes who miss the run cutoff will be non-finishers on the timing system and not entitled to the finisher medal or shirt athletes who drop out during the run must please go to the dropout clerk to register so all athletes that have been dq'd or cut off post event will be sent an email at the end of the race you have until 9 a.m on monday the 22nd to query this then the finish line protocols once you've crossed the finish line you will receive an iron man branded mask please put this on right away then you collect your medal and your finisher to finish a shirt and please take the size that you ordered due to COVID-19 regulations we may not swap out finisher shirts please remove your timing chip and belt and place it in the bins provided collect your streetwear bag and you're going to want this to put your warm gear on from the racks as you exit the finish line then you collect your pre-packaged post-race meal and hydration from the final aid station Please do not sit and wait for fellow athletes at the finish line area. Head directly to the Hobie Beach car park where a shuttle be, will be waiting to take you back to Kings Beach Transition where you can check out your bike and bags. The volunteers will assist you. An overhead view of the red carpet and the finish line of the Ironman African Championship It'll be a right-hand turn off Marine Drive, a second right-hand turn onto the finish line with the Indian Ocean on your left shoulder, Marine Drive on your right shoulder as you'll run your way to the finish line arch and those four special words, you are an Iron Man. You'll receive your mask, go and get your medal, get your finisher shirt, go get your post-race meal and hydration, and then please make your way to the Hobie Beach car park where the shuttles will take you to Kings Beach. The official bike and bag checkout process takes place between quarter to 5 p.m. Sunday afternoon and 2300 hours Sunday night. To remain within COVID-19 regulations, we encourage you to head to the bike checkout area as soon as you've completed your race. Bikes and bags will be checked out using your race number. Volunteers will check your number to the number on your bike and bags. If you cannot collect your own bike, please give your bike checkout card and race number or bib number to a friend or family member. Please do not hand anything over the fences. You must leave the transition with your bike and your gear bags. Do not ride your bike home or to, the, or to your hotel if you're not wearing a helmet. Essentially, once you are in the field of play as a registered athlete, even pre and post race if you're riding your bike you must wear a helmet and whatever you do please don't hang your gear bags from your handlebars that's a surefire way to crash when they get stuck between the spokes of your wheels please note that is it is illegal to interfere with another athlete's nutrition or gear all bikes and bags must be collected by 11 p.m on race day You will enter the transition zone very much like you did when you did your bike check-in and you'll exit exactly at the same point. It's the place where you exited to start your swim. Enter, grab your bike, grab your gear and exit. Slots, the Ironman World Championship slots are for October 2022, which will be in Kailua Kona and that is on the 8th of October. Only athletes who opt in will be eligible for the slot allocation process. This slot allocation will be done online. The athletes who opted in and who qualified will receive an email informing them that the process has started. In the following days, athletes will have an automatic piece, 
athletes who have an automatic slot will receive an email with a link from Active to register for the 2022 Ironman World Championship. You have 48 hours to click on that link and redeem your slot through the link provided. And the cost is 1,100 US dollars plus the active fee. Should you not click on the link and accept your slot within 48 hours, that slot will roll down to the next eligible finisher. Due to COVID-19, there will not be a physical award ceremony. The award ceremony will actually be filmed and will be posted online on all the Ironman South Africa social media platforms. However, there is a window of time on Monday for you to collect your trophies. Starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, the professional men and the professional women, you'll collect your trophies between 10 a.m. and 10.05. And this will be happening at the convention center where we did registration. So you'll know exactly where to go. Then I'm not gonna go through all these age groups. There are your time slots, screen grab this quickly, uh, but I really do congratulate you now already on being there on Monday morning to collect your trophies. As mentioned, the awards presentation will be done post-race. On Monday, it will be filmed and it will be shown online on Monday night on all the Ironman social media platforms. You will also receive a 300 Rand voucher. So Ironman South Africa, in the past, we've always had fantastic awards functions, great meal, and a wonderful after party. Unfortunately, due to C19, that is not possible. But Ironman South Africa very kindly have uh, arranged with many, many restaurants in the area that you can get a 300 Rand voucher to go to those restaurants and enjoy your race weekend. Due to the strict COVID-19 regulations, there'll be no finisher shirt swaps on Monday. Should you have any timing queries, please email them to michelle.dalton at ironman.com and sharon.talbot at ironman.com. You have 48 hours to query your results. If there are any lost and found, please email southafrica at ironman.com. Be sure to tell all your family and your friends and your fans to track you on the official Ironman Tracker app. It works like a charm. And also tell everybody to watch on Facebook, Ironman Now. It'll be beautiful, fantastic, full live coverage from start to finish of the Ironman African Championship. It's an incredible pro field, amazing amateurs racing. Be sure to watch that. Follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. Now, there is the possibility, as always, of having to alter the course. We have to talk about this in the hope that we don't have to do it. But we have multiple scenarios. In the event of a shortened course, the process will be as follows. At 5.30 p.m., the race director will advise the announcers, and the announcers will advise all the athletes in the transition zone. So the first scenario is a shortened swim, where the swim distance will be anything from 700 meters to 1.9 kilometers. The bike will remain the same and the run will remain the same. If it's a shortened swim, the professional men will start at 650, professional women at 655, and the age group is with a rolling start at seven o'clock. If it's a shortened swim, the swim cutoff will be reduced from two hours 20 to one hour 10. Scenario two is a shortened swim for the pros, but for the age group athletes, a bike run with a rolling bike start. So the pros, once they've completed their swim, we will start the rolling bike start for the age group amateurs at 7.20 a.m. 182 kilometer bike and a 42.2 run. The third scenario is that the swim is canceled for everybody. Then the professional athletes will start at 6.50 with a rolling Bike start, age groupers, per scenario two, will start at 7.20. And you'll line up in the transition on a first come, first serve basis. The announcement will be made. You'll be advised to go back into transition or to get changed out of your swim gear into your bike gear. If you do then have swim gear spare, all that goes into your bike bag. Pro athletes will line up in the chute behind the mount dismount line 
and they'll leave every 30 seconds. Age groupers start will be at 7.20. You'll self-seed yourself at the bike out in section, and there'll be two athletes starting every eight seconds. Once again, it'll be net chip time. The cutoff times on the road of 12.45 at Beacon on Marine Drive and at 14.45 at the penalty tent in Beachview still apply. So those hard time of day cutoffs will still apply. The final bike cutoff of 8 hours and 10 minutes for the bike leg will be done post-race by the timing team. A time of day cutoff on the run at the Kings Beach on Marine Drive when heading in the direction of the Admiralty Way at 5 to 10 p.m. will still be enforced. The final cutoff will again be done by the timing team post-race. Please be aware that you could be DNF'd after the race, so please check the results and verify with the timing team. All that's left to say now is thank you so very, very much for your commitment, for the sacrifices you've made, for the investments you've made, for the time you've spent training to just be in Nelson Mandela Bay and to be on the beach at Kings Beach to start the 16th edition of Ironman in South Africa, to be part of the 2021 Ironman African Championship, Nelson Mandela Bay, South Africa. Good luck.